FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. It's January 9th, 2018, and the good news is there's only, and I'm going to say this exact, two days, 11 hours, 46 minutes before Jason's signature event, Meet the Masters, (laughs) takes place. Jason Hartman, welcome back. Thanks, Kerry. Yeah, this is our annual Meet the Masters of Income Property event. Uh, we've This is our 20th anniversary of this event. Uh, we haven't been doing it quite for 20 years, but we used to do it twice a year. And it's it's such a big event. It takes so much work to coordinate all these speakers. It's three days. And, you know, we got speakers flying in from all over the country and attendees from a few different places around the world, which is pretty exciting. We'll have uh, probably give or take 300 people at this event. And i um, really looking forward to it. I've got some new, uh, new information. I always try to save the new stuff for the event, and uh, I'll share a little bit of that today with we'll you in an interview, uh, time permitting, about uh, a prediction I made six years ago that came came true. Well, really seven years ago, I made the prediction, and it, it came more than true, actually. Yeah, hey, and made... Well, I guess it was just slightly after the crash that you made that prediction, Jason? Yes, sir. 2011. I was. It was 2011 at Meet the Masters. Uh, I predicted that there would be, uh, in the next six years, there would be six million new renters. Uh, and of course, our philosophy is very conservative, buy and hold investing, buy and hold properties for rental. And uh, that's the most historically proven wealth creator in the world. And um, uh, well, I tell you, it, it was better than than I expected uh, by, a, by a margin. And uh, so that's really, really exciting. Uh, we had more than 6 million new renters and um, our investors have profited from it handsomely. Uh, things have been uh, things have been really good. And, uh, you know, I think we're on the verge of a bit of a change, though, actually one that I'm welcoming. Uh, we're going to see some rate hikes this year. Uh, they say three to four rate hikes this year. Now, the Fed doesn't directly control mortgage rates, but they do obviously influence them uh, through, you know, various economic policies. And I uh, uh, rates are going up. So, you know, it's a good time to buy properties before those rates increase. And uh, those rates, will, uh, rate increases will keep home buyers from moving out of the renter pool and they'll keep them in the renter pool because they can't qualify for loans. Uh, but also it'll keep other investors out because the deal later that those investors get as they have to pay higher rates, you know, remember everybody's buying real estate on a payment, not a price. Mm. Okay. Uh, the equivalent carry is, uh, uh, about uh, 1% in interest rate equals approximately 10% in price in either direction. So if the rates go up 1% to offset that and make it the same, the prices would have to come down by 10%. And that just never happens that way. It's never that significant. Um, You tend to see the market cool a bit as rates rise. Um, Well, initially when they rise, it actually heats up because people have fear of loss and they jump in and buy. But ultimately it cools a bit. You know, rates do cool the economy. Rate rate increases do cool the economy and and the real estate market, of course. But um, uh, the other investors that come later have to pay higher payments. And so the deals don't pencil as well for them. And, um, and that keeps the rental supply low and, um, and home potential home buyers staying in the renter pool keeps the rental demand high. So it's, it's a good thing. Hey, well, you know, that kind of ties in with a prediction that you made last time you were on, which I think is is going to be proved to be 150% correct. And that is that especially in bluer states, uh, many of you out there who are really getting slammed by this tax bill because you can't well, write off. You've, you've already been getting slammed by living in a socialist yeah, well, state, of but, course. <laughs> but of it course. just got worse. Yeah. But you're getting right. extra slammed by the bill. Yeah. And yeah. what's going to happen is uh, because you can't write off your real estate taxes, you can only write off 10,000 of your state and local taxes. So what you're going to do is sell your house and 
become a high-end upper middle class renter where effectively uh, you've always said this uh, you know your formula which is hey if you pay a hundred thousand for a house it should be able to yield a thousand dollars a month in rent but when you pay a half a million dollars for a house for some reason it's normally only going to come up with uh, roughly three thousand dollars a month rent so you're going to get almost 0.6 percent of the purchase price translates into monthly rental uh, fees so what we're going to see there is that more renters in the upper middle class because one of the main enticements for owning homes in these blue states because you're being soaked by taxes is the tax subsidy to you know to own a home because right. effectively you get subsidized between the uh Interest so payments. The, fed, the feds are subsidizing you yeah. uh, and encouraging you to make malinvestment, to make bad investment decisions in overpriced, overtaxed, overregulated, and usually overcrowded places. Uh, so, you know, I just don't really see the attraction. I don't understand why people want to live in these places. Now, understand that I lived almost my entire life in Southern California. Okay. And after getting out in 2011, I just thought it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, and, and hopefully, Carrie, this will have the effect, you know, all, all the leftists and Marxists are whining about how unfair this is, but hopefully it'll have the effect of making them put pressures on their own governments in their states and municipalities and saying, why the heck are you taxing us so much? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what, that's the real conversation. You know, so many people go through life asking the wrong questions. Yeah. And and one of the questions I have found to be very valuable is compared to what? You know, when people talk about their problems and their misfortune, I mean, compared to what? You know, it, uh, pro I don't know the number, so I'm just going to guess here, but hundreds of thousands of people every day wake up in North Korean prison camps, re-education camps, yeah. <laughs> okay? Because communism is so good, you have to force people to accept the idea, okay? <laughs> That's the way it yes, always works. Of course. And so, so you know, how, how bad? really is our life. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. All we have to worry about is uh, getting screwed by the government for well, taxes. Well, yes, but compared to what? Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, nope. it's, uh, that should be our worst problem. I guess in, for a lot of you out there, it is your worst problem, right? Mm -hmm. True or false? Fair enough. Yeah, well, well, you know, that that is that is true. So hopefully, you know, look at people, vote with your feet. If you can't do it now, get yourself out out of these places that are just robbing you. Get them out. Get out of them. Okay. Get out of California. Get out of New York. Get out of Massachusetts. You know, yeah. get to more friendly environments. The single, you know, when when we do our events and when I'm teaching people stuff on my podcast, Carrie, whenever I start talking about taxes, probably most people kind of roll their eyes and think, oh, this is boring. But taxes are the single largest expense in any of our lives. And we have got to learn how to manage and mitigate tax costs consequences because it's that's costing us fortune. Yeah. It's really crucial. It is. No question about it. Yeah. yeah. Really important. And uh, hey, death and taxes, death and taxes, yep. my friend. <laughs> the that's two it. things we can't escape, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's people do vote with their feet. The disingenuous media and liberal elite like to say, well, people don't move from New York to Florida because there's no state income tax. They move for the good weather. And <laughs> look, the weather in Florida, frankly, in the summer sucks. It's yeah. actually better in New York. And there are a lot of things to keep you in New York, but taxes are not one of them. Economics, look, because if I think back on how much money I spent in state income taxes in New York State and what I, little I received in return, I would be well off retired now in a large estate on the ocean because it's, it comes out to a ridiculous amount of money. And you know, I don't know if I could have made the money that I did in Florida that I made in New York, but hey, I voted with my feet finally, still paying them a little bit of tax on mm -hmm. some New York-based partnerships, but basically the rest is mine. And and, uh, and, you know, in Florida, even though we get all these people from the blue states coming here, anybody tries to implement a state income tax, it's political death for them. 
Yeah, well, good. That's the way it should be everywhere. <laughs> That's the way it should be everywhere. Hey, Carrie, so, you know, you did a great job uh, uh, the last time uh, you had me on your show outlining how this impacts uh, specifically, you know, the the sort of example person that you used living in, say, New York City, I think it was. Yeah. And um, it's hugely significant. It's hugely significant. So, you know, suffice it to say, hopefully this will put pressure on these local and state yeah. governments to change their, their evil ways that that's what really needs to happen here. But hey, um, I want to make sure we have time to talk about this important prediction I made uh, back in 2011. Can we jump into that? Yeah. So you made a prediction okay. dealing with uh, what was going to happen as a result of the crash of 08, 09, what would happen to the volume of renters and, you know, like people who don't own their ho own homes, there's only two reasons why you don't own your homes, or there's only two alternatives, put it that way. Number right. one is you're dead. And number two is you're a renter. That's yeah. really the well, only choices. I, I used to say you could buy, you can rent, or you can be homeless, but there's actually a, a fourth option. <laughs> and the fourth option is you can live with your parents. <laughs> yeah, well, we certainly see that that's become a popular choice. <laughs> but if they're dead, that's, that's the option there. But yeah, obviously homelessness, but that's not really a voluntary choice. Yeah, you're, right. you're either uh, an yeah. owner or a renter. Yeah, There's nothing yeah. in they, between. Those are the basic ideas. So so the thing the thing to understand here is that, um, you know, we're in the business of renting to people. Renters are our customers as conservative, prudent, long-term investors that we are, and that's what we help our clients do. Uh, that's basically what we do. Now, let me talk for a moment about predictions. First of all, look at predictions are a dangerous business. Okay. Especially <laughs> about the future. I, yeah, Yogi Berra. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yes. I love that. I love Yogi Berra and his funny sayings like that, you know. When you come to a fork in the road, yeah, take, take it. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But but um they they really are a risky business and I've made a lot of predictions. I have been surprisingly accurate in many of them. I want to tell the listeners first of all as a disclaimer, one I've been deathly inaccurate about and um I mean years and years ago, you know, I started doing this in 2004, helping helping people 14, well, yeah, 14 years ago now, helping people invest in properties nationwide and help them build their retirement uh, by building these diversified nationwide real estate portfolios of really conservative yield producing properties. And I've been predicting for many years that interest rates would be higher. And I've been just wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> so I want to just get that out of the way. That's one of my predictions I have been wrong about. Because look, how can you predict government and central bank intervention. You just, it's hard to, it's not an accurate market. Look at it. If it were just the marketplace, interest rates would and should be higher, but they're not because of this, you know, manipulated um, market where you have all this intrusion and interference in the marketplace. Okay. But on this one uh, is one of the many that I've been very right about. And I, I'm just going to recap it at my upcoming event in uh, San Diego, California, just in a couple days, you know, our annual Meet the Masters of Income Property Conference. The prediction back in 2011 was six years, six million new renters, mm. because I predicted that the homeownership rate would decline. I said that would be really good for investors. That's what we want. This uh, false idea promulgated mostly by the Bush administration that homeownership rates need to be high is is just a it's just a non sequitur carry it, it it doesn't make any sense there's no there's no empirical reason homeownership rates need to be high i think and i'm the like maybe the only guy in real estate saying this that the homeownership rate should decline more i think the homeownership rate should go down to about 55% Okay, versus, you know, being at 62% or 69%, which was the peak. Uh, I mean, this, the, 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 you know, you don't need to own a home. A home is not an investment. It's a speculation. It's an expense. It's an obligation. It makes people less mobile. Uh, the, the best thing for a, a good economy is to reduce friction in all things. When you have less friction, you have a better marketplace of any type. And one of the frictions with home 
ownership that's huge is that it's hard to move to where the jobs are. And you want to be able to move to where the jobs are. Uh, the United States is the most mobile, civilized society. I'm sure there's some nomadic tribe that might technically yeah, beat us. Be, okay. Someone would argue yeah. with you about civilized, but well, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> but we're, we're the most mobile, advanced society. Is that a fair way to say it? In the world, okay? Our, the, this is a very mobile country. And homeownership rates reduce mobility and increase friction. So there's no stigma against renting anymore. That's gone. That's an old-fashioned idea. Now, listen, I think you should own a lot of real estate that you rent to other people, but you don't have to own the home in which you live, okay? Just be an investor. That's what it's about. So 2011 prediction, six years, six million new renters. Um, back in 2010, we had about 117 million households. Uh, homeownership rate at that point was off from the high, but it was still really high, 67% basically. Yeah, and there were about, yeah, and there were about 39 million renters, okay? So then uh, let's look at how this started to unfold, okay? Uh, I thought we would regress down to about 1994 levels of 64%. Mm. And that was the prediction. It was public. It was on the podcast. It was, you know, 100 people, 120 people in the room heard me say yeah. it, okay? It was recorded. And here it is coming true, right? So so uh, the factors, of course, the Great Recession reduced the homeownership. Um, and uh, we had the peak in 2004 of 69%. And we modeled that return of the 1994 rate. Okay. So basically what happened is we had a renter population growth from 2010 of about 39 million, I'm rounding, to about 46 million in 2016. And the homeownership rate came down uh, to 63.4%. Um, and uh, the equivalent is 1% uh, in the homeownership rate carry is equivalent to just over, or it's, well, give or take, 1.2 million new renter houses households. Huge, huge. Everybody who is in a real estate investor or is interested in real estate investing should be loving the, a reduced homeownership rate because renters are your customers and this is making the size of your marketplace increase. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. We want to serve these customers. We want to provide them with good quality properties. And uh, that's what we do as investors. It's a great point. And, you know, this concept that everybody should be a homeowner was so distressing destructive. Really, a homeowner is a form of conssumption, consumer consumption. Mm -hmm. When you own a home, good point, you know, good good way to look at it. It's a liability. It's a liability cuz you're not going to own it for cash and even if you do, the question is, if you have that cash and I've heard people say it, you should rent your own home and own other homes that others yeah. rent no and question. you know, it's just tax advantage so much better. So many so many reasons to do it that uh, that you really need to go over to uh, to the meet the masters of uh, income property. Hey, yep. Your favorite, my favorite uh, speaker there really doesn't have that much to do with real estate. That's former Congressman Ron Paul. Yeah, Ron be Paul there. Is he speaking. was yeah. on both our shows recently, and you know, then you have so many good people there who really who really know yep. what they're doing. Besides you. <laughs> yep. We've got the two leading real estate market researchers uh, uh, speaking, John Burns and Jeff Myers, and they're awesome. And, um, you know, we, we're, we're going to get some great perspectives there. And listen, if your people listening can't attend live, if they can't make it out to San Diego, uh, you know, this is obviously short notice, they can get a live streaming ticket and um, they can do that at jasonhartman.com slash watch, jasonhartman.com slash watch, or just jasonhartman.com if you want to surf around the website a little bit. Um, and, uh, if they want to come, jasonhartman.com slash masters. And um, uh, the, I got the um, link, the link yeah. is right in the show notes to uh, the interview. Just click it. It'll bring you right to the registration page. You only got two more days to do it. So yep. make sure you get it done. Um, you know, I went to one a couple of years ago. I've been to a few of them and had the best time. I love the people there and just uh, such smart people, the speakers, you really learn a lot. You know, I found myself, Jason, the end of the day, kind of exhausted, not, not out of boredom or anything like that, but just out of overflow, overload from taking in so much information, but it's so useful and it really can make a difference in your future, in your plans, your retirement 
environment, all of these things. And especially if you're a little younger, if you're in that 35 to 44 range, say, or even to 50, you know, you really need to attend there and learn this information. You know, Jason, one of the best things is how simple you make it. Like how much should a house rent for? Coming up with that formula of 100 times the possible or probable monthly rental really makes the whole process so rational and simple. Yeah, right. right. Well, one of my 10 commandments of successful investing is thou shalt not gamble. In other words, Carrie, the property must make sense the day you buy it or you don't buy it. And let me just so everybody understands, you know, we've got so much going on in the world all the time. Uh, You know, right now we've got like tulip mania, the cryptocurrency bubble. (laughs) You know, let, let me just define for your listeners how they know if something is an investment or it's not. It's incredibly simple. Mm -hmm. Here's how you know if something's an investment. Does it produce income? Yeah. If it does not produce income, it is not an investment. It's a speculation. Speculation. It's a gamble. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I know a lot of your listeners like precious metals. Listen, I own them. I think they're fine as an insurance policy, et cetera. But precious metals don't produce income. Okay. Uh, Cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin does not produce income. You got to have income. Vacant land does not produce income. Income. Okay. If it, it non-dividend paying stocks do not produce income, if it does not produce income, it, it is not, to my thinking, defined as an investment. Okay. It is a speculation. It is a gamble. And listen, sometimes speculators and gamblers win. That's okay. Uh, you know, I get it. Just understand what you're doing. Okay. You're gambling. And, and as long as you understand that and you're only doing it with a small portion of your wealth, then, hey, have at it, you know, Uh, but that's the important thing is to understand, like people call themselves Bitcoin investors or, you know, uh, it's like an oxymoron. Yeah, it's not that's not the definition of investor, according to Hartman, at least. (laughs) Or a New York City real estate investor is really a definitely not an investor. Yeah, (laughs) You you can have cap rates that are so low one, two, three percent that you're really just totally relying on future appreciation. And that makes you a gambler, a speculator, because who the heck knows what the future is going to bring, Jason, Mm -hmm. other than behavioral things like, hey, we had this crash, we had this major real estate bust, and there's a lot, there's going to be a lot less homeowners out there than were before, owners in quotes, you know, that kind of especially in retrospect, very obvious. But the price of what the Empire State Building is going to be worth in Manhattan in 10 Mm -hmm. years is pure speculation. Totally. Yep. Yep. Really important. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, hey, so anyway, make sure you go to the link in the show notes on Financial Survival Network to this interview. Click the registration link. If you can't make it, then by all means, sign up for the live stream. Live streaming is almost as good as being there, but not quite. There's Mm -hmm. nothing like a live event to really get your juices flowing. But hey, if you can't make it, then you got to do what you got to do. And Jason, uh, good luck on that. Uh, I'm going to try to get there. Got personal matters that probably are going to prevent me. Yeah, I understand. uh, I'll definitely be at next year's for certain, which I'm sure will be even bigger and better than this one. Sounds good, Carrie. Well, listen, happy investing to you and all your listeners. And um, be sure to check out my podcast. Uh, You can just search Jason Hartman on iTunes or any podcast platform and find the Creating Wealth Show uh, or catch me at jasonhartman.com. And and Carrie, uh, good luck uh, with everything. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jason. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. And uh, so that's really, really exciting. Uh, We had more than 6 million new renters and um, our investors have profited from it handsomely. Uh, Things have been uh, things have been really good. And, uh, you know, I think we're on the verge of a bit of a change, though, actually one that I'm welcoming. Uh, We're going to see some rate hikes this year. Uh, They say three to four rate hikes this year. Now, the Fed doesn't directly control mortgage rates, but they do obviously influence them uh, through, you know, various economic policies and uh, uh, rates are going up. So, you know, it's a good time to 
buy properties before those rates increase. And uh, those rates will, uh, rate increases will keep home buyers from moving out of the renter pool and they'll keep them in the renter pool because they can't qualify for loans. Uh, but also it'll keep other investors out because the deal later that those investors get as they have to pay higher rates, you know, remember everybody's buying real estate on a payment, not a price. Mm. Okay. Uh, the equivalent carry is uh, about uh, 1% in interest rate equals approximately 10% in price in either direction. So if the rates go up 1% to offset that and make it the same, the prices would have to come down by 10%. And that just never happens that way. It's never that significant. Um, you tend to see the market cool a bit as rates rise. Um, well, initially when they rise, it actually heats up because people have fear of loss and they jump in and buy. But ultimately it cools a bit. You know, rates do cool the economy. Rate, rate increases do cool the economy and, and the real estate market, of course. But um, uh, the other investors that come later have to pay higher payments. And so the deals don't pencil as well for them. And, um, and that keeps the rental supply low and, um, and home potential home buyers staying in the renter pool keeps the rental demand high. So it's, it's a good thing. Hey, well, you know, that kind of ties in with a prediction that you made last time you were on, which I think is is going to be proved to be 150 percent correct. And that is that especially in bluer states, uh, many of you out there who are really getting slammed by this tax bill because you can't well, write off. You've, you've already been getting slammed by living in a socialist yeah, well, state, of but, course. <laughs> yeah, of but it course. just got worse. Yeah. But you're getting right. extra slammed by the bill. Yeah. And yeah. what's going to happen is uh, because you can't write off your real estate taxes, you can only write off 10,000 of your state and local taxes. So what you're going to do is sell your house and become a high-end upper middle class renter where effectively uh, you've always said this, uh, you know, your formula, which is, hey, if you pay 100000 for a house, it should be able to yield $1,000 a month in rent. But when you pay a half a million dollars for a house, for some reason, it's normally only going to come up with uh, roughly $3,000 a month rent. So so you're going to get almost 0.6% of the purchase price translates into monthly rental uh, fees. So what we're going to see there is that more renters in the upper middle class, because one of the main enticements for owning homes in these blue states, because you're being soaked by taxes, is the tax subsidy to, you know, to own a home because right. effectively you get subsidized between the uh Interest so payments. The, fed, the feds are subsidizing you yeah. uh, and encouraging you to make malinvestment, to make bad investment decisions in overpriced, overtaxed, overregulated, and usually overcrowded places. Uh, so, you know, I just don't really see the attraction. I don't understand why people want to live in these places. Now, understand that I lived almost my entire life in Southern California, okay? And after getting out in 2011, I just thought it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, and, and hopefully, Carrie, this will have the effect, you know, all, all the leftists and Marxists are whining about how unfair this is, but hopefully it'll have the effect of making them put pressures on their own governments in their states and municipalities and saying, why the heck are you taxing us so much? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what, that's the real conversation. You know, so many people go through life asking the wrong questions. Yeah. And and one of the questions I have found to be very valuable is compared to what? You know, when people talk about their problems and their misfortune, I mean, compared to what? You know, it, uh, pro I don't know the number, so I'm just going to guess here, but hundreds of thousands of people every day wake up in North Korean prison camps, re-education camps, yeah. <laughs> okay? Because communism is so good, you have to force people to accept the idea, okay? <laughs> That's the way it yes, always works. Of course. And so, so you know, how, how bad? really is our life. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, yeah. All we have to worry about is uh, getting screwed
screwed by the government for taxes. Well, yes, but compared to what? Come on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's it's uh, that should be our worst problem, I guess. For a lot of you out there, it is your worst problem, right? Mm -hmm. True or false? Fair enough. Yeah. Well, well, you know that that is that is true. So hopefully, you know, look at people. Vote with your feet. If you can't do it now, get yourself out of these places that are just robbing you. Get them out. Get out of them. Okay. Get out of California. Get out of New York. Get out of Massachusetts. You know, yeah. get to more friendly environments. The single, you know, when when we do our events and when I'm teaching people stuff on my podcast, Carrie, whenever I start talking about taxes, probably most people kind of roll their eyes and think, oh, this is boring. But taxes are the single largest expense in any of our lives. And we have got to learn how to manage and mitigate tax costs consequences because that's costing us fortune. Yeah. It's really crucial. It is. No question about it. Yeah. Yeah. Really important. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. It's January 9th, 2018, and the good news is there's only, and I'm going to say this exact, two days, 11 hours, 46 minutes before Jason's signature event, Meet the Masters, (laughs) takes place. Jason Hartman, welcome back. Thanks, Kerry. Yeah, this is our annual Meet the Masters of Income Property event. Uh, we've This is our 20th anniversary of this event. Uh, we haven't been doing it quite for 20 years, but we used to do it twice a year. And it's it's such a big event. It takes so much work to coordinate all these speakers. It's three days. And, you know, we got speakers flying in from all over the country and attendees from a few different places around the world, which is pretty exciting. We'll have uh, probably give or take 300 people at this event. And um, really looking forward to it. I've got some new uh, new information. I always try to save the new stuff for the event, and uh, I'll share a little bit of that today. We'll do an interview, uh, time permitting, about uh, a prediction I made six years ago that came came true. Well, really seven years ago, I made the prediction, and it, ca- it came more than true, actually. Yeah, hey, and made... Well, I guess it was just slightly after the crash that you made that prediction, Jason. Yes, sir. 2011. I was. It was 2011 at Meet the Masters. Uh, I predicted that there would be uh, in the next six years there would be six million new renters. Uh, and of course, our philosophy is very conservative: buy and hold investing, buy and hold properties for rental, and uh, that's the most historically proven wealth creator in the world. And um, uh, well, I tell you, it, it was better than I expected uh, by a, by a margin. And uh, hey, death and taxes, death and taxes, yep. my friend. <laughs> the two it. things we can't escape, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's people do vote with their feet. The disingenuous media and liberal elite like to say, well, people don't move from New York to Florida because there's no state income tax. They move for the good weather. And <laughs> look, the weather in Florida, frankly, in the summer sucks. It's yeah. actually better in New York. And there are a lot of things to keep you in New York, but taxes are not one of them. Economics, look, because If I think back on how much money I spent in state income taxes in New York State and what little I received in return, I would be well off retired now in a large estate on the ocean because it it comes out to a ridiculous amount of money. And you know, I don't know if I could have made the money that I did in Florida that I made in New York, but hey, I voted with my feet finally, still paying them a little bit of tax on Mm -hmm. some New York-based partnerships, but basically the rest is mine. and, uh, and, you know, in Florida, even though we get all these people from the blue states coming here, anybody tries to implement a state income tax, it's political death for them. Yeah, well, good. That's the way it should be everywhere. <laughs> That's the way it should be everywhere. Hey, Carrie, so, you know, you did a great job uh, uh, the last time uh, you had me on your show outlining how this impacts specifically, you know, the the sort of example person that you used living in, say, New York City, I think it was. Yeah. And um, it's hugely significant. It's hugely significant. So, you know, suffice it to say, hopefully this will put pressure on these local and state yeah. governments to change their their evil ways 
that's what really needs to happen here. But hey, um, I want to make sure we have time to talk about this important prediction I made uh, back in 2011. Can we jump into that? Yeah. So you made a prediction dealing with the 